is an AI revolution that is making academia and research so very uncomfortable and it's because it's making us question the actual foundation question that everyone has been avoiding for many, many years, which is what skills actually matter in academia and what does a researcher actually have to do as part of a research job because AI is taking away more and more of those tasks and uh, it's making people feel uncomfortable. Let's check them out. So the AI tools that I'm talking about are Agents. This is GenSpark Super Agent. We've also got SciSpace Agent. We've also got Manus AI, which is another agent. And an agent is a type of AI tool that allows you to put in a single prompt and then it spins out ba -ba 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 -ba. loads and loads of kind of other agents that work together, other AI tools that work together and bring it together into one output. And uh, in the past, you know, chat GPT, you ask it a question, question, and then you get a response, response. But now you can do full tasks and full workflows with a single prompt. And that is taking away some of the hmm, important skills that academics have always had to rely on to communicate their work, to actually produce outputs that really are the foundation of an academic career, like papers, grant applications, literature reviews, they can now be done for you. So if there's something that, that can do that for you, what actually makes a researcher a researcher? Is it those skills? One of those skills is creating academic peer-reviewed papers so you can publish in a journal to let everyone know that you're the better scientist than them. So this is GenSpark. GenSpark is super sort of like uh, powerful because it is agentic, which means that I can put in something like this, which is just figures. I put in some figures that I created with their um, captions and I said, write a peer-reviewed paper draft based on my figures that I've attached. And you can see it's given me a full paper draft. Now, is it perfect? No, but is it better than my first draft that I could do? Yes. Was it done in a matter of minutes? Yes. All of these things mean that now I've got a structure for a paper that actually I could use to build out my uh, real submittable paper. But being a researcher, is this cheating? That's what we've got to ask ourselves. Is this cheating? Because it's happening, it will happen in the future, and is creating a paper draft a core fundamental task of a researcher that we can't outsource for fear of losing skills? Because it's here for you now, you just gotta use it. As simple as a one sentence prompt in a free tool like GenSpark, and it goes even deeper than that. So you may be thinking to yourself, it's okay, what about the data collection stuff? Surely the data collection stuff can't be done by an agent. Well, if you want meta-analysis, which is what a lot of sort of researchers rely on, um, you can do that really easily now. So using something like SciSpace Agent, you can see you can do all of these things down here, but ultimately this is what I was asking. I was like, put all dinosaur field study locations in Africa on an interactive map. So if I wanted, for example, to create a literature review or do a review paper, or or do like a meta-analysis, this is now done for me. So are we willing to outsource that skill? Let me know in the comments because it can be done for you now and way better than I could do in the time that I gave this tool. So for example, this is what happened. It went through all of these things. It searched SciSpace, it searched SciSpace full text, searched Google Scholar, all of the things I would have done. And then it created a database, something I would have done. Then it found all these papers and it extracted the key insights, something that would have taken me hours and hours. And then we've got this, okay, I've got a comprehensive location database. Well, yeah, I could have done that, but it would have taken me hours. And then it created this, an interactive map, key statistics, deliverable. So it created an HTML map. And then I was like, you know what, just instead of giving me like this, let's, uh, what did I say? I said, uh, create a website showing African paleonto paleontology, pale paleon paleontological. Why can't I say that? Anyway, research with this map. And then it went away and it created a website. So not only now are we outsourcing the skills, 
We can also augment our skills by doing something that I could have never have done without learning a load of stuff that I probably don't want to learn, which is like JavaScript. Yuck. So look, it did this, it did all of these things, and this is what it put out. It said, here is the website, and if you click here, it really goes... <laughs> What? You can now not only outsource the, the, you know, purely academic stuff, but you can augment it into things that really, really are, you know, such a great way to present your research. It did all of this, something that would have taken me hours and probably not even been worth my time. So you can see here that, let's have a look, explore interactive map. It gives me an interactive map. I click on each one of these little things and it gives me this information about that uh, site. This is just incredible. And uh, so now it can go out into the internet, it can collect data, it can put it into a spreadsheet, it can produce an interactive map, all of those things probably better and faster than you could. And uh, yeah, data collection. I mean, that's all really we've got left, isn't it? Go into the lab and creating results Oh, until those, uh, I don't know, Tesla robots take over. That's that's what we've got at the moment. Hold on to it. Another skill that we talk about is grant applications. As you progress in your academic career, you need to get all of that delicious money into your bank account so you can continue to work in your field and eat and, uh, I don't know, make sure your children don't go hungry. But now you can find grant applications, find research grants for my role as a researcher. It did all of this research and it gave me these ones that are currently applicable in my region for my research field that I could apply for all the way, I says up until like 2029 or something like that. This used to take ages. And then of course you can say, okay, I'm actually applying for this. Give me the introduction to a um, grant application. And I did that. And is that part of an academic fundamental career that we cannot outsource. You know, it's making us ask these questions because it is the answer to these questions that will provide us with guidance on how we can use AI and we can't be super restrictive and say, oh no, you know, we can't outsource that because that's part of fundamental uh, skills that a researcher needs. I think it's time to look at every single thing that a researcher does and be like, you know what? Is that the thing that makes a researcher a researcher? It's a tough series of questions and a tough kind of conversation to have, but it needs to be done because at the moment, academia is still on the, oh, should we use chat GPT? Should we not? Yeah, people are using it, how they use it. Let's make sure we hold on to those critical skills that make a researcher a researcher. And one of the other skills now that can just be done by agentic AI is creating a PowerPoint presentation of your work. Is that a core fundamental skill that researchers need? Well, now you can just put in a paper, for example, that you've written or AI has helped you write. And you can say, turn this paper into a PowerPoint presentation. And then it can go all the way down and you can see it's creating slides and it will produce a PowerPoint presentation for me. Now, is this perfect in the way I would want to represent my work? Not necessarily but you can see that it has given me a load of um, sort of outputs and you know this is a PDF document so this didn't render properly but ultimately you can get a uh, outline you can get all of the things that you need to put into your presentation quickly using AI using agentic AI and that is what is making academia and research so very very nervous because we can now do a bunch of things that were impossible to outsource in the past. And uh, let me know in the comments which skills you feel like we must, we must protect as academics. Because surely we can't outsource everything. There's things that are fundamental to calling yourself a researcher. What is it? Let me know in the comments because we need to work this out if we're gonna be using AI, which we will be doing. All right, hmm. All right, here's the presentation that it actually produced. Uh, you can see here, you know, this is pretty good. Would I use this exactly as it is? No, but that's a pretty good start. And here you can see it's like really, really sort of like dense and full of uh, information. But ultimately, these are the sorts of things you could talk about. And here you can see we've got research objectives, all of this from a single, <laughs> look at that, that's not right. <laughs>
<laughs> well done anyway. But you can see that it's sort of like looked at all of the materials. It knows the uh, the the process. It understands what order things should be in. So overall, you know, this is um, a great first start if you are creating a presentation and it's only going to get better from here. If you like this video, go check out this one where I'm talking about the AI revolution and specifically how to use SciSpace AI Agent to do a load of awesome academic tasks. Go check it out.